He'll just look at just freeze dry. I think on the iron bundle, but we'll see if it's even brought. As Jay's gonna kick things off with the Maraidon and the Grim Snarl, and for Enrique, it's gonna be the Frigograph and the Incineroar. Yeah, so the fairly passive lead from Enrique gets two supportive Pokemon on the field. Furgraph blocking priority, but there isn't any on the other side anyway. And Incineroar out to fake out one of these Pokemon. Meanwhile, Grimmsnarl is there to try to bulk up this Maridon, and there's no shortage of offense from Zay's side. When you have a choice specs Maridon there, it's ready to take a KO against either of these Pokemon. Just needs an Electro Drift or a Volt Switch to deal a ton of damage and get off the field. Has to watch out for a possible... No, there is no ground terrestrialization on Furgraph. Just the fairy terrestrialization means both Pokemon are fully vulnerable uh, to electric damage. It looks like Zay is well positioned to be able to just start uh, defensively boosting with a Reflect or a Light Screen and then go out on the attack with Maridon. It's tough here too because like you're gonna see the Maridon terrestrialize here first, which is going to lean into that offensive output especially with the screens, maybe even a Thunder Wave though. I'd be a little concerned about seeing that come through. But Enrique, in this position with these two supportive Pokemon on the field, feels threatened. We can't let this Incineroar just go down. So this defensive terrestrialization to allow this Incineroar to take the Terra Grass, maybe it'll help to be able to keep this Incineroar alive. But we've seen what this Maridon can do when it has that Terra and that electric terrain. Yeah, we've seen some Maridon damage into Rillaboom. Here's a Maridon Volt Switch into Grass-type Incineroar. Still does 40% damage. That's wild to think about. That That is just as much damage as you can do to this Incineroar. It allows Jay to get this Maridon off of the field, and you're still able to do some big damage. If that Incineroar hadn't terrestrialized, by the way, uh, I think it's it's gone. I would, yeah, <laughs> Uh, probably taking about 80% damage, might have had a chance to eat a citrus berry and look okay, but still a ton of damage built, built back. You can see the power of the Volt Switch here, where Enrique is forced to use a defensive terrestrialization, protect to make sure it is a Furgraph that takes that Volt Switch, but Jay gets to deal that damage and then just flee to the back. Doesn't have to really risk the Maridon at all. There was no way it was going to take damage on that turn. And it's nice too because Maridon here can also just keep chipping away at some of these Pokemon and get them into a range where you could just potentially discharge the whole field. Talk about there not being a ground terrestrialization on the Furgraph on Enrique's side, but Jay has one. So maybe there's your synergy that you're looking for for this Maridon. Yeah, and no ground types at all. With the terrestrialization now spent, the entire team, there, there's a few Pokemon that may resist grass, that, or resist electric that could be in the back, Fluttermane not one of them. Um, and so it can very quickly look like if you can get the speed advantage or the, the screen so that you can manage to take a hit and then fire a discharge back off, that it's going to be very difficult to slow this Maridon down. And meanwhile, Enrique, with a team that's very built around Maridon, trying to get it boosted and set up, hasn't actually shown it on the field yet. Has led this passive lead and now gone into the flutter main as well. But it can mean that Maridon may be too slow to the field. If it comes on the field and still has to boost, meanwhile, Maridon is already set on KOing all of the Pokemon, that can be difficult to catch up. Well, it's going to be another switch here for Enrique. Gets the Flutter Mane on the field, but it feels really tough when you know that there is an Iron Bundle that is still going to be uh, faster than you, as Incineroar are now going to take its place. But I worry about just a Light Screen going up here to help deal with this Flutter Mane, and then what is this Iron Bundle going to get up to? Oh, an Encore! Very smart to go ahead and, and just kind of lock into that if you thought that there was going to be uh, something funny coming out from the Furgraph. Yeah, tries to lock the Furgraph into Protect using Encore, but doesn't land it. Sin and Sonora manages to pivot back in, and a pretty solid Dazzling Gleam. Even with Light Screen going up, because Grim Snarl is weak to Fairy, and Iron Bundle so naturally weak to special attacks, a ton of damage comes back out. So Nurika gets a really solid damage trade out of that turn. Doesn't give up much. The Light Screen was going to go up at some point, and you'd rather have the Light Screen go up likely than the Reflect that's going to mitigate the damage from the Crydon once it hits the field. So I think a pretty solid turn for Enrique. The, the Iron Bundle, it, the Volt Switch landed Iron Bundle on the field. Iron Bundle has no way to return the favor. It's very difficult to get Iron Bundle off the field and back to some other attacker. And so our Iron Bundle stuck here at minus one special attack, trying to throw off Encores but not having any success and taking a ton of damage. Well, this is just the chip war as uh, we see both of these Pokemon have to play it a little bit safe. Iron Bundle does not want to go down quite this second, but Oh, Grimstarl is actually going to go for the Thunder with Frigoraph. Knowing that Grimstarl is a prankster Pokemon, is going to be able to shut down any of those prankster attacks. And now the Dazzling Gleam is just going to take it out too. I wonder if Jay there had an opportunity to even just go for something like the Reflect instead, knowing that that Grimstarl was going to go down. Yeah, I mean, I think that could end up being very impactful to this match, that the Grimstarl went down without ever getting a Reflect up. 
Enrique hasn't shown the Crydon yet, but it is back there. It is waiting for its opportunity, and when it comes out, it's going to be unmitigated because Fluttermane did its job, got two Dazzling Gleams off, got Grimmsnarl off the field, and meanwhile, a lot of what Zay has tried to do has been disrupted. It's the Encore not working because Frigraph came off the field, and then the Thunder Wave not working because Frigraph came onto the field. And it's giving... Uh, and Ricky the advantage in these trades and making sure that the damage is landing in the places and ways he wants. Of course, now that just let Maridon back on the field, able to threaten so much damage. It seems, feels like every time Maridon gets to enter the field, that is a huge cost that Enrique's going to have to pay to get it back off the field again. Well, here's that reveal of the Coridon that's sitting in the back. And so the Aurichalcum Pulse going to help to at least get this sun and pro 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 protosynthesis boost here for the Flutter. So speed, now in this Flutter mains control. So that might be really beneficial here, if only that the Iron Bundle is still faster. Gets to get this Icy Wind off before we do get a chance to see this Flutter main move. And, and with that speed drop too, it's actually going to allow this Maridon to move first with the Electro Drift. Yeah, Maridon very fast here, gets an Electro Drift off and deals so almost oh a KO. Gosh. And just right, you can see the raw power behind that. That's wild. I mean, th you gave yourself the advantage to at least get a huge chunk of damage into that Coridon, but that speed drop was so important just to make sure that you were able to get the damage off first. Landorus now going to be the fourth and final here for Shay. Flutter main, very fast. Speed boost, extremely fast. It's the rare situation where Iron Mundle just ever so slightly naturally faster and so is able to get that Icy Wind off. And with the Icy Wind undoing the Protosynthesis speed boost, that makes the, the Maridon faster as well and means that the Maridon is now consistently faster. In that situation, it didn't actually matter. If the Fluttermane had attacked before the Maridon, the turn still plays out the same way. But you can see the damage into the Maridon is really not that much with only a spread Dazzling Gleam from a a Fluttermane that's likely more focused on speed than a special attack, even with the choice specs, and with this fight screen up, not going to trade into Maridon in a good enough way to withstand the damage coming in, and so Fluttermane just switches out and brings this Fergraph back on the field. It is able to reset that speed drop, and Coridon has no choice except to go for Protect here. So Enrique's best case scenario is that this Fergraph goes down without being able to fight back so that that Fluttermane can come back out in its place. So Fergraph takes this Electro Drift. It does get one hit knocked out, giving the opportunity for this Incineroar to, to come in and get a fake out or that Fluttermane to come back in. Yeah. Ooh. This could be the window that Enrique needs. Undoing the speed drop means Fluttermane can come back in, be the fastest thing on the field. Threaten that Icy Wind that could be really impactful should mean both a bunch of damage into Landorus and that Coridon is then faster than Maridon. Maybe between the damage from an Icy Wind and a Dazzling Gleam, you start to look at Maridon and think it's in a collision course range for Coridon. Could be a pretty impactful turn. Um, both players have only lost one Pokemon as well, so it's not like Jay has this big lead that, that Enrique has to very carefully trade into. Even if Landorus gets an attack off this turn, uh, things could still look in Enrique's favor. I mean, that Icy Wind is still going to be 75% to that Landorus's HP pool, but with that speed drop, this Coridon can outspeed this Maridon, and because it's choice specs, no way to protect itself from this collision course. So that is a huge trade that Enrique was willing to make, getting a chance to take out this Maridon on, and this lander is going to be able to go for the earth power into the flutter. It's still not enough to take it out. Yeah, doesn't pick up the KO um, and leaves Landorus by itself against two Pokemon. Fluttermane should be faster and able to just pick up the KO. So the dominoes fall uh, kind of on their own. The damage is there. The attacks are kind of funneled in the way that they have to go and is not in Jay's favor. The speed ends up working out for Enrique because he's able to undo that Icy Wind by just sacrificing the Frigoraph Ruby, not a very high cost to pay when you see how easily it closed up this game and gave Enrique the game one. Yeah, amazing, especially after having... ...as his primary damage source with Freeze Dry, and then it also came into a parting shot. So it wasn't actually threatening a ton of damage. You can see why Jay prioritized some kind of disruption and support because Iron Bundle had been really mitigated in how much damage it could do. Well, here's a bit of a switch up. Not for Enrique, as it's going to be the Incineroar and the Ferrigaraf to lead, but if you look behind that Ferrigaraf's tall neck, there is an Iron Bundle standing back there next to that Maridon here for Shay. 
Well, for Jay, this is probably the most potent offensive combination he can put on the field. The Iron Bundle with all of its speed and Icy Wind ready to support, uh, next to him a ride on with all the damage it offers. But once again, Enrique in a relatively passive lead. He, he can lose either of these Pokemon without it being a massive cost in this game. It's not going to be a game losing KO if Jay finds the right targets, but can also try to disrupt, can throw a fake out into one of these Pokemon and slow things down, could have uh, I try to find a pivot with a parting shot to get Crydon or Fluttermane back in the field and probably just doesn't risk that much in the meantime while Jay just tries to switch out Iron Bundle, save it for later where it may be more impactful against Fluttermane and Crydon than it is against these Pokemon. Oh, well, here's an interesting adjustment. It's going to be the Ferrigoraph here for Jay in this game number two. Has an electric seed, so he is going to boost up that Ferrigoraph's defense. And the fake out, not able to go through onto this Maridon and stop it from going for a huge Draco Meteor into the Incineroar. It barely hangs on with a sliver of HP, but the Incineroar able to heal up a little bit more of the Citrus Berry and Maridon locked into that unless it switches out. Oh, and this is fascinating. Trick Room goes up. So we talked before the game that neither player really builds this for off that focus on Trick Room, but it could come up with both of these things are so fast that Trick Room could be an option as Enrique gets the Trick Room up. I think that turn one plays out in a really interesting way where both players have conditioned each other into a little bit of something. In game one, the Incineroar didn't fake out. Was probably worried that Furgraph could have just come in and disrupted that play. This time, Furgraph does come in and disrupt the fake out when Enrique opts for it. But also in game one, the Incineroar used a grass terrestrialization to mitigate electric damage coming in. Jay wants to be one step ahead of that this time. Doesn't use an electric move. Throws for the Draco Meteor instead to try to pick up a KO despite the grass terrestrialization. Well, doesn't get either. The Incineroar does not use a grass terrestrialization. Could have just been a Volt Switch for about as much damage. And the Incineroar hangs on, gets his Citrus Berry back, and then because of the Draco Meteor drop, it's right on now forced to switch out and bring back in the Iron Hands. Oh, well, Iron Hands is a great adjustment to have if you were expecting to have to play in Trick Room conditions. This is at least an Iron Hands that's able to threaten something like a Drain Punch. It also has Ice Punch as one of its attacks, but Parting Shot now into the Iron Hands is going to lower a little bit of that attack output as Enrique gets a chance to pivot out this Incineroar for later. Yeah, so immediately some of the damage threat from Iron Hands is mitigated. It lands in a really great position with Electric Terrain up to give it an attack-boosting Quark Drive, um, and in Trick Room, where it becomes the fastest Pokemon. With, with, you know, in the same way that the Maridon boosts so much when it's in Electric Terrain because of the Raw Boost and the Quark Drive, well, the Iron Hands can do the same thing when it goes for a Wild Charge. It can mean it's so much damage into something like Fluttermane, um, but the Parting Shot will help mitigate that. Furgraph able to get a little bit of chip from a Hyper Voice does some damage, but neither of these Pokemon that vulnerable to, uh, to that low base power special attack. Does, of course, get the Throat Spray, starts to boost up and be a better uh, damage threat afterwards. It is tough here because with this Furgaraf, you're, you're kind of hoping that you're going to block some of that priority, but you also have that Electric Seed that you're kind of hoping is going to be on the receiving end of something like that Coridon just to boost up your defense a little bit. Let's see, though. We'll have to see if the Trick Room uh, actually plays out in Enrique's advantage. I think a really important uh, situation to come up with, the Iron Hands is likely to go straight out on the offense against Fluttermane, so Fluttermane does just switch back out. This is a Trick Room that Enrique set up, but it's now a Trick Room that's forcing him to pivot his own Pokemon. So Incineroar comes back in to intimidate his Iron Hands and weaken it a little bit more. Yeah, but if that's a, if, if, imagine if you see a Drain Punch call in that slot, that would be absolutely wild. But what we do see is a Terrastalization. It's going to be onto the Iron Hands. It gets the Water Terra type and just wanted to be able to defensively change away from some of the weakness that it had to that Fluttermane. Maybe Jay not exactly uh, expecting that Wild Charge to be enough, especially if an Incineroar switches in, but the Wild Charge into the Incineroar now is such low HP will definitely be a knockout. Yeah, Jay wants to protect the Iron Hands, recognizes that with Trick Room now up, it becomes a very crucial piece to this game. It's his biggest advantage in uh, Trick Room, and so using the drastalization to make sure it couldn't have just gone down to Fluttermane if Fluttermane had been able to withstand a Wild Charge and go out on the attack. And it's really important here as well, because this Iron Hands is now going to resist this Flame Charge from this Coridon. We know it doesn't have Flare Blitz, so even in the sun, this Iron Hands should be able to take it. A Collision Course is going to do a That's ton true, though. <laughs> of damage. Um, Iron Hands has been intimidated and parting shotted to where it is really not that much damage threat, even with the Quark Drive. Uh, could maybe pick up a KO on the Furgaraf with Wild Charge because of the electric terrain, but Crydon is where the focus is. And Iron Hands is not threatening Crydon. So even though the speed advantage is fully in Jay's favor, because of the Trick Room, both of his Pokemon will move before this Crydon. They probably can't do enough damage to really be that big of a problem for this Crydon. And it 
can just start attacking, try to pick up KOs, try to pick up boost. It could sword stance in this position. It could flame charge to try to have his speed advantage when Strickland goes up. A lot of flexibility for this Crydon because it's in a pretty safe position. Yeah, oh, coming down to the wire there for some of that move selection. But the Trash Nation is locked in here for this Crydon. Gets a fire terror type. And one of the, the changes that we saw in this Iron Hands that is critical to mention is that it does have access to Ice Punch. So this is also one way that you can really keep this Crydon safe in front of that type of threat. But this Fergraph also going for the Protect. Uh, it was a really interesting choice, though, between going for the Flame Charge and even just being able to go for something like the uh, Collision Course there. But opts to just kind of sit there and try to get some setup in as it takes this Twin Beam. Ooh, with a Wild Charge, actually trying to go into the Fergraph to take it out. Yeah, Jay recognizing that the Iron Hands really wasn't that big of a damage threat, and Crydon so tries to get something with a KO out of that turn, but just does a little bit of damage with Twin Beam and gives up a Sword Stance. This Crydon now looks so threatening. A Sword Stance boosted Collision Course is going to KO any of Jay's four Pokemon. There isn't something left that can take that attack. Every time it attacks and finds a target, it will pick up a KO. Ooh, I love that uh, uh, thought process, though, too. If you go for Flame Charge now while the Trick Room turns are expiring, then you will be guaranteed the fastest thing coming out of Trick Room if you play it right against something like the Iron Bundle. But just wants to keep it safe, knowing that this Maridon has put, uh, Crydon has put a target on its back, the foul play could have really done a number to it. Yeah, a neutral foul play with an attack boost would have done a ton of damage. Well, the Wild Charge into the Frigoraph is going to be enough to be able to secure the knockout there, but we're getting into the territory where these Trick Room turns are going to start to expire, and we have a, yeah, Coridon and a Fluttermane potentially able to, to just do some work together. Yeah, Coridon and Fluttermane on the attack as the last two Pokemon as Trick Room expires. So you couldn't ask for a better position for Enrique as Trick Room expires. The problem is that the Electric Terrain also expires, which means that Maridon comes back in, is going to reset it. We know that Iron Bundle is in the back. We know that when all four of those Pokemon are on the field together, that is a speed advantage in Jay's favor. The Icy Wind can land first, which can mean that the Maridon gets to attack first. The thing that can disrupt that and shift this game back into Enrique's favor is a Flame Charge from the Crydon. And there's a perfect opportunity to go for it here because there are these two very passive Pokemon on the field on the other side. Even if you miss a KO, you don't have to worry that you're going to lose Crydon this turn, and so it's an easy opportunity to try to get that speed boost. Yeah, I mean, just the Moonblast into the Iron Hands is almost enough to be able to pick it up, but even with this Flame Charge, uh, you're going to be able to get this Ferrigaraf. I mean, talk about the fact that you've got the Fire Terrestrialization, plus you're in the Sun, and now you've got that speed boost as well. We can really start to see this come to fruition. Shea does have the opportunity here to go for a Wild Charge into the Crydon Whoa. and the critical hit! It's just going to knock it out! All of that setup off the full, after, just completely gone. Oh, it's such a crucial, critical hit. Undoes the parting shot, undoes the Intimidate in a moment, and undoes this game for Enrique as the Wild Charge lands into the Trastalized Crydon, no longer resisting Wild Charge and opening itself up to that damage. That two attack stages of attack boost, one stage of speed boost are wiped off the field. Fluttermane now left by itself. Choice Specs locked into Moonblast, going to be single target attacking. It's going to need three attacks to get through a Focus Sash and two targets. There is just no way that's happening. Fluttermane's going to get KO'd by the first Electro Drift that lands, and Jay is going to take this game and push into a game three just shocking fashion as it felt like and everything was building up to Crydon closing this out with so much damage and one critical hit undoes it all. I couldn't even get the right words out of my mouth because of how speechless I was and just for an insurance policy you have the icy wind to drop this Fluttermane speed the electric drift to finish it off and there's the game three that you have foretold. Jay damage into it in the end of the game and he was set up to not, a, to lose that in two games and not be able to pull out a game three, not be able to try to keep going with a 2-0 record. But now, all things are undone. It all reset. We're even at 1-1, one one, both players one game away from that 2-0 record. And all bets are off, as we see the Maridon and the Coridon across from each other, just like Scarlet and Violet intended. Jay has that potent offensive threat again. Enrique, so far in two games, had led more passively to try to get Crydon in the field later. We're done with that. We're straight to the <laughs> to the main Pokemon here. Incineroar ready to support uh, Crydon. I think it's a very uh, tricky position. It's another one where you can try to fake out to buy Crydon a little bit of time, but if Furgraph comes in, that could end up being a disaster. Either of these Pokemon landing an attack into Crydon could really disrupt what Enrique's long-term game plans are because so much of the value is in 
cried on. But the right prediction, the right fake out, or a parting shot as a more passive switch turn happens for Zay could start to open up the window for Crydon to attack. I and mean, this is a really crucial turn one. It's going to set one player on the attack and the other player trying to figure out how to pick up the pieces. Well, we're going to see the terrestrialization from this Crydon. It's going to take that fire type once again. Uh, and not a bad choice to make when you know that this Maridon across the way is packing a Draco Meteor. That would be a one-way ticket to getting taken out of this game just before it starts. And Iron Bundle doesn't want to be on the receiving end of a fake out either. Fake out intended for this Maridon will be able to land its mark and the flame charge as well just as follow up. It'll help them start to offset some of these icy winds that could come through and wow. This is just an enormous turn. We talked about one player seizing an advantage from this turn. This could not have gone better for Enrique. The Iron Bundle protects itself doesn't want to get faked out, but the fake out is in the other spot. And it's not damage follow up, it is flame charge follow up. That means the Crydon is starting to boost up. Of course, should still be slower than the Iron Bundle on the other side. With a clear amulet, means Iron Bundle can't use an icy wind to slow that Crydon back down. So it can stay ahead of the Maridon. And there is no hydro pump. It wouldn't do that much damage in the sun here anyway, but not really a way for the Iron Bundle to threaten. And so Crydon really set up to be all out on the attack here, but first can just protect for a turn doesn't want to get Plane Charge Ooh. on board. That makes sense as a way to disrupt it. And so protects for this turn and gives Sinora a chance to attack. Oh, and even better that you're able to protect yourself from the double into that Coridon as the Incineroar gets to mitigate some of this Maridon's damage output with his parting shot. So if it already wasn't soft enough to get knocked out in this next turn, you've also now limited its special attack and you get a chance to pivot into something that can really take advantage of the sun. The problem is that there's no way here to stop the next Encore coming in. If it had been a Rage Powder in the back, you might have been able to Rage Powder away that Encore, but Fluttermane can't accomplish that. We know it's still slower than the Iron Bundle here. And it's not a Flame Charge that you're gonna, you're gonna get stuck into any, anymore, it's a Protect. And so Crydon got that speed advantage. It drew a ton of attention to itself. It's one of those plays where once a Pokemon gets a strong turn, you can recognize the other your opponent's terrified of that thing. It's going to throw two attacks into it and so safely is able to Protect through it. But now can maybe still draw that attention. You can still expect that an Encore is gonna go that way. Maybe that opens up space for Fluttermane main to try to pick up a huge KO into Maridon, but it shouldn't be able, Crydon shouldn't be able to just sweep this game from this position unless Jay gives the window. Well, Jay might not be because that Maridon is getting terrestrialized and that Electric Terra is going to make up for a bit of the difference that it got from that parting shot as the Encore into the Crydon is going to lock it into Protect. So, poor Coridon, if you didn't want to before, you're going to have to try now, and that Protect is not going to go through. It's going to leave it a little bit vulnerable as the Moonblast first from the Flutter is going to just get the knockout onto the Maridon before it can even go for the offensive. Yeah, I think a really smart play from Enrique there, continuing to use the attention that Coridon was drawing to shift the options that were available for Jay and find that damage. If you, these Pokemon had just been led against each other and there was no earlier Flame Charge boost, well, this is a pretty easy turn. It's just Icy Wind to slow down the Flutter main and let Maridon go out on the offensive. But because the Iron Bundle has been forced to Encore, because you cannot let this Crydon just have a free turn. Enrique willing to follow it up and make sure that you actually click the Encore button because if you don't, that would have just been Crydon out of the Encore box and ready to go out on the attack. It opens up the window where then Fluttermane in the sun faster than Maridon and that Flame Charge uh, uh, chip from earlier on meant that Maridon, even after the electric terrestrialization to get away from its dragon typing and its weakness to fairy is just in range for a choice specs moon blast and now it's a restricted pokemon advantage for enrique of course that's a restricted pokemon that just has to switch out because it's on court into protect but he can pick up the pieces find a different position get that cryon back in it's still at full health and meanwhile zay has lost his restricted pokemon is just freeze drawing flutter main Ooh, a critical hit though. So it is going to take that Fluttermane down to about half health, but Fluttermane is one of those Pokemon that's known for its special defense. Gets a chance to fire off another Moon Blast into the Iron Bundle as a response, bringing it down to its Focus Sash with a Trick Room set up here from Jay. Just trying to reverse a little bit of the course when knowing that Enrique had the speed in his advantage with the Fluttermane and Sun, as well as a Coridon with that Flame Charge boost. But you also have a Phurgraph now. Yeah, as fast as the as the Trick Room went up, the speed control went back into Enrique's favor. Phurgraph uh, should be slower than the Iron Bundle. The Fluttermane we know is slower than the Iron Bundle. And so both will move before it. Iron Bundle just going to then protect itself, try to get through this turn, and let Phurgraph try to take advantage of that Trick Room. 
Yeah, Twin Beam is going to be able to land into the Flutter Main, but take a look at how little damage that's going to do. It's not like you're holding a Throat Spray that can help to boost up that special attack. Uh, and the Fergaraf in response, uh, just going to be able to kind of do the same thing because it is holding that item. Gets the Hyper Voice off, would have been the KO onto the Iron Bundle, which of course had to protect itself, but gets the boost, gets a little bit of damage in a Fergaraf, and because Fergaraf was able to threaten the KO into Iron Bundle, that opens the Flutter Main to just go after the Fergaraf, continue to pick up damage. Since the Maridon went down a couple of turns ago, this Flutter Main has then gotten to Moonblast the Iron Bundle and get it down to Focus Dash. Moonblast the Fergaraf for about 50% health, and the health advantage is so quickly going so far into Enrique's advantage. Yeah, I mean, still, like this Flutterman and Fergaraf, they get a chance to move first. Fergaraf Hyperboy should just be two KOs here, and so Iron Bundle has to switch out, has to find a different position, but that's just more damage mounting because it's going to be at Hyper Voice into that slot, and if the, the Fergaraf on the other side goes down to Hyper Voice, it'll be a Moon Blast into the Fergaraf. Oh, well, the foul play first, so getting a chance to take advantage of the Trick Room means that you're able to take out this Fluttermane before it gets a chance to get that KO, and you definitely don't want the Iron Hands to have to take that. There is retaliation from the Fergaraf on Enrique's side to knock out Jay's, and you're down to Jay's final two Pokemon, but look at the health pool that Enrique's have. Yeah, the health is so far in the advantage. The speed is in the advantage for Enrique. The uh, in Iron Hands will get to attack first, but it's going to be doing that intimidated and without electric terrain. And so... Is Drain better. Punch going to be enough for this Incineroar? It gets to fake out this Iron Bundle anyway if it wanted to and just knock it out. The fake out can go into Iron Bundle for a KO. can go into Iron Hands to make sure that Jay, you really can't accomplish anything on these last couple turns of Trick Room. Things just look so easy for Enrique to play out here. Just has to still play it flawlessly, though, because you can't open yourself up to another crit. That would be devastating. But the fake out into the Iron Hands, the Psychic to follow it up, will be nice, super effective damage. Not quite enough to be able to pick up the KO. Uh, so you're threatening to be able to get a lot of the HP back if you're able to land a Drain Punch into something like the Incineroar. But I think Enrique's played this perfectly. You've got the Coridon in the back that can tank that instead. Yeah, Crydon can switch in to take a Drain Punch. The Iron Hands shouldn't have enough damage to take the Fergaraf off the field, which means a Hyper Voice can just land and pick up a couple of KOs. It feels like the dominoes are falling one by one as Jay just is forced to give up so much health for every attack. That last turn was a giant psychic just to get through one more turn. Yeah, but it's worked out for sure. The Drain Punch, take a look at that. Crydon does, in fact, take it like a champ. And you can see just how little HP it's going to get back. Iron Bundle is still going to be the last to move. So this Fergaraf with the Hyper Voice gets the double KO. And Enrique takes the series two to one. Wow. Such a well-played match, Enrique. That featured different game plans and different